much. Uh, good morning and namaskar, and thank you for being with us, Minister Siddharth Nath Singh. Uh, uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, on behalf of Horasis, I intend to welcome you. Thank you for being here. We have four panelists that will come on board later. Mr. Sandeep from um, the ASM group of companies, Mr. Srinivasan, Chair, Managing Director of AFCONS, and Sean, who is the President of the Chamber of Commerce of India, US, in Boston. Uh, we have a great subject today because it's about Uttar Pradesh. And as we speak, a, it's, a, it's a state with 23 crores, 230 million people. You know, if you put France, Italy, Germany, all of put together, this is the state of UP. And so it is a country by itself. And, uh, you know, as we speak, something I must tell you, there are 40 members from 44 countries and about 1,000 people watching this at this point, all this for asset meet. So our outreach is very high at this point. Uh, Minister Siddharth Nath Singh, a few words about him. Um, you know, he's uh, was born in October. He belongs to a legacy family of freedom fighters. And uh, for all of you who don't know this, he is the grandson of our second prime minister, Mr. Lal Bahadur Shastri. So there is a lot of legacy in him. And, uh, you know, he's an economics graduate. So he brings to the table economics from Hindu college. He joined BJP 95. He's been the national secretary. He's been the spokesperson. He's the executive committee member. Uh, he's a minister with multiple portfolios. He has done health. He's doing MSME. He's doing export and in investments and NRI. And, uh, and he's known to be a reformer because he brings business, youth, and uh, the young millennial uh, into, the, into the advocacy and governance. So, uh, Mr. Siddharth Nath Singh, I have two questions that I may want to ask at this point to get this going. Uh, because you are MSME, which is an important part of what we're going to talk about, uh, what are the uh, reforms and, and structures that you are doing at this point in Uttar Pradesh for, for the growth of UP in the MSME sector, if that is one thing you may want to share your thoughts on? And second, which is on the minds of everyone, people are a little worried about COVID and pandemic and coronavirus. You know, I know UP government has done a great job. If you may want to share some of your thoughts on how you've been able to achieve this. So the MSME and this set and this thing. After you have done your thought, I will invite each of these panelists to share their thoughts. One of them in the education sector, one of them in the infrastructure sector, one of them in the manufacturing sector. And they may have a question or two for you. And then we'll take up some few questions from the chat room of all the listeners. And then we'll have a conclusion at the end of the day. All right. Okay. Over to you, Minister Siddharth Nath, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Neeraji. And, uh, well, I do see on my screen uh, the MD of uh, AFCONS, which is a well-known established uh, construction and infrastructure company. And uh, also, Mr. Sean is uh, here look uh, at the Indian Chambers of Commerce, and that's a very useful platform. I've already had uh, interactions through USIVC and also through USISPF. And, uh, well, I do look uh, for your opportunity to use your, uh, to be invited at your platform also. Uh, and also, here I'm seeing Mr. Sandeep uh, Pachpande. He's, uh, well, it's a well-known ASM is a well-known uh, educational institution. So you have done great jobs uh, all over, and all, we always look at when you all will come to UP. So we would be more than happy to receive you and your institution. But it, since uh, Neeraj, you had asked me this question on uh, MSME. Now um, let me put this uh, MSME. We are in a large number. We are almost nine million MSME. Now, when we talk about making MSME a hub, which is a dream of our, my chief minister, and also the prime minister says that it's time that UP becomes a manufacturing hub of India. And therefore, MSME then plays a big role. Uh, in that, uh, what we need to we needed to do is uh, we had to take up certain reforms. And I'm happy the, the chief minister and the cabinet has uh, approve many of the reforms. Uh, one of the reforms has been we were uh, the pioneer in India to bring in the labor reform. 
Now in Uttar Pradesh, as of today, for existing and the new units, if you wish to uh, establish a unit, you're welcome to establish, but only two acts or two clauses of the Labor Act will apply. One is uh, the minimum wages you need to pay. And the second is uh, that uh, you have to, uh, uh, you have to, uh, there will be no bonded uh, labor agreement. And uh, you can just go on the minimum number of hours. So this is uh, encompasses the entire uh, uh, Labor Act now, which will be applicable. So all that we had seen, the Inspector Raj coming through Labor Commissions and all, is over. It's a history in Uttar Pradesh. Now, similarly, we looked at our MSME Act also. Needed a lot of changes in that. So we have, we have introduced our MSME Act. Uh, hopefully it gets uh, clear uh, this coming cabinet that is tomorrow. And in that uh, MSME Act to say in simple words is you apply for any MSME unit in Uttar Pradesh. You give your letter of intent. There is a prescribed two pager form. You apply in that within those 72 hours we process and give you an NOC. Based on that NOC, then there are other clearances which are, uh, you do need to comply with, but you have to submit within three years. You can start your projects within after 72 hours. The basic idea has been that there are a number of delays and Uttar Pradesh is uh, championing in uh, bringing MSME plug and play system and a num few places we are focusing uh, to have a flatted uh, factories so that we introduce the plug and play system for MSME. So that's one of the reasons. So similarly, we are also introducing the textile sector in Uttar Pradesh where MSME, which is an MSME and so that we can bring in the plug and play system in Uttar Pradesh. So these are two basic reforms, I would say, which uh, I would like to highlight here. Then there are many other things uh, which to, you know, MSMEs, their delayed payments and also we have introduced a, a kind of a, a more legal teeth we have given to our MSME units that in case uh, your payments are delayed over a prescribed period, that depends on your own contract. Uh, in that case, the we uh, through the commissioner we will issue an RC. RC is a revenue uh, certificate which is issued on. If you do not pay, then a criminal proceeding starts against the, the, the to whom the liability stands. So the the MSME units then stands in uh, advantage that yes, there is a criminal act which uh, defends their payments. So that is another thing which we have brought. Similarly, we have brought that uh, if you put up your MSMEs in Uttar Pradesh, you our government contracts in Uttar Pradesh will ensure that despite you not being L1, well, we have to open it for the country, uh, the tendering system. But uh, if you are not L1, then you are given for that 25% of the quantity of the tender to match that price and therefore you get that order. Similarly, there is a 15% price preference also we give. So this, uh, these are good uh, you know, initiatives of the government to encourage MSMEs. Uh, at the same time, uh, in MSME, which never it had never happened, but... Uh, Gradually, the government is discussing, for example, with UK, I've discussed, with the Denmark, I've discussed. So there are many countries, particularly of bringing innovations and technology in the MSME sector. So we are going ahead with signing uh, agreements so that we can bring in technology and innovations. Similarly, I should mention here, uh, Uttar Pradesh is very rich in uh, traditional uh, artisan or handicraft products. Now, 
and that has been dying that was the basis of in uh, the big export going from uttar pradesh so what we have done is we have introduced in 2018 a dream project of our chief minister where he that's called one district one product now each district we picked up one product and they that was a traditional product and we developed that product from designing packaging and branding now therefore a lot of uh, investment also from the government side went in for training of those skilling of those artisans to the new new ways of uh, how the technology can be imported and we have done import of technology so as to compete uh, well uh, the business world is competing with china all the time or bringing business i'm not getting into that areas uh, but certainly the idea was always to compete with china because on pricing so we have brought in technology and skilling so therefore i'm very happy to uh, state that last year the up's export went up by 28% we and it's now 100 115000 crores and uh, in that 80% of the items which went up were odop products so this has really helped uh, uttar pradesh particularly the rural industry it's brought in an income and therefore the economy at the rural income goes up then certainly the economy of the state also looks uh, healthy and uh, so there are many things i can just keep uh, i can keep uh, going on but Thank i'm you. sure uh, you uh, during the course there will be many other things which you would like to hear now coming on the covid 19 there were two questions you asked me so Correct. i'm cutting short on my msme but i'm not talking about my covid 19 uh, well uh, i'll just list couple of things i think it was uh, starting early in the fight against covid help up uh, uttar pradesh uh, traditionally we have a uh, 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 what i call is uh, i don't know whether you have heard it's called japanese encephalitis and acute encephalitis syndrome they are communicable diseases now when we came in government at that time i was a health minister and we realized that for last 40 years almost 1000 children were dying per year because of this in 38 districts of uttar pradesh so we brought brought in sops standard operating protocols in the health sector and we launched a massive program a propaganda along with the unicef and melinda gates foundation and we went ahead in training almost 1 uh, crore that's 10 million health workers the frontline health workers we trained them we went around uh, knocking at the doors in the rural areas in these 38 districts three times in a year and there were 66 lakh houses that we picked up and we kept on training them through various channels and we brought a lot of conversion of various ministries together which we never realized that they can be also instrumental in controlling communicable diseases so the same exercise we were able to place in for covid because it's a virus at the end of the day it's a virus and apart from that there were other issues for example which never gave a good picture about india is the labor issue the migrant issue our chief minister i still remember the date 17th of march he at that time we were, there was no lockdown we were hearing two things he decided one he decided that 1000 rupees immediately needs to be sent in the account of all the laborers who are in uttar pradesh and registered so we had the almost about uh, 35 lakh 3.5 million laborers who who accounts a direct benefit transfers was done so they were satisfied that nothing is going to go wrong if there are lockdown coming in and uttar pradesh was the first, one of the first states in 16 districts we have 75 but 16 districts i still remember from 22nd to 25th of march we brought in a lockdown so there were a number of things like that uttar pradesh was able to handle 
and uh, that gave us the edge and uh, we brought up we have now more than a, a lakh beds available to uh, any of these patients who needs to be put in quarantine so all these things have been a, a good a result of uh, active or uh, in anticipation working in the area of uh, covid 19 so i think uh, i will leave it here because the time would be again yes. of constraint thank you so much i think thank you for sharing all this is very encouraging to hear all these positive things that up is doing and because it's such a big state everyone's looking all eyes are on up so thank you for sharing this i'm sure we'll have some more questions i will now uh, invite mr srinivasan who is the managing director of afcon uh, well known infrastructure company to share his thoughts in regard to up a little bit and if you have any questions for the minister or some thoughts that you may want to share take a few minutes we'll we'll start over 2 3 minutes each and then we get back to it thank you over to you mr srinivas good morning mr neeraj honorable uh, mr siddharth nath singh and my fellow panelists i do uh, find that up is a great state it i would say in terms of natural resources in terms of its population in terms of its uh, minerals and other uh, resources it's on the top it's the largest uh, a quarter of the uh, largest producer of vegetables fruits dairy products but not but the fact remains up even as on date is at sub 1000 dollars gdp which is i would call it as a very very significant up's growth will determine india's growth in the in terms of gdp of up it's of a uh, second worst we were very proud to be associated with agra lucknow expressway project which we completed in a record time of 22 months which we set a new national record in completing that uh, with all that we find when uh, the government changes there are issues being raised instead of getting settled so that something in governance part of it we would feel there has been a significant improvement in the last couple of years and uh, we need to have further improvement to get uh up into the top notch here yeah, there is no need for us to look uh, you have one of the largest uh, educational institution 7000 and dot and in terms of technical institution 700 and dot and in terms of diploma institutions almost double of that with all that there is education there is land availability there are 31 rivers small big flowing through up and uh, 55% of the up's population is dependent on agriculture with all that how do we really improve the situation of up which will be the torch bearer and we have uh, with us with uh, very close by we have bangladesh in a short period of time how much they have grown and vietnam they have made 10 times the exports from that of 26 billion to 265 billion over a period of 15 years and uh, similarly bangladesh so bangladesh has focused on substantially on garments and infrastructure development vietnam has uh, similarly focused on similar areas and we are in a position to offer with a large labor situation we are in a position to offer a huge place and with uh, now companies planning to shift out of uh, china many of them in from many countries can we make up as one of the important manufacturing hubs of the country and uh, can we have the proper infrastructure development in terms of highways logistic chains and cold storage tank there is of course a good amount of cold storage in potato belt we are uh, there is scope for improvement though and beyond that whether we can improve that there in terms of irrigation we can improve that a bit so that agriculture could be mechanized and uh, for in terms of production it could be better so as a holistic basis if we really attempt over a period of next one decade up can be on the top of india if we really address the governance issue infrastructure issue and in terms of logistics issue these are the three areas which i would call is to be done where i think substantial improvement in terms of governance has started happening we will see further as we move forward that's it my initial submission thank you mr srinivasan that was that is an experienced hand sharing the thought because you worked and you've got insights into what's happening on the ground so thank you so much for your uh, inputs i'm sure 
Uh, Minister Sadat Nath Singh will have some response later towards the end of the session and what you want to do. May I move over to Sean right now, who is the president of the Indo-US Chamber of Commerce, settled in Boston, and uh, your thoughts on some of the manufacturing vis-a-vis what can be done with Uttar Pradesh and what you can bring on the table for UP specific so that the minister may have some connect uh, with his team. Thank you. Thank you, Neeraj. And uh, Honorable Minister, thank you very much. In fact, uh, Neeraj has been holding you at very high esteem. And he has been talking some good about you all the time. So I wonder there's uh, something happening between Neeraj and yourself. <laughs> He's very happy to note that you have been one of the ministers who have been forthcoming and have been yeah. helping yeah. them. So I think thank you very much for this particular uh, opportunity. Um, having said this, it was quite interesting in timing that I just noted that you has announced a one trillion uh, budget with different industry segments that you are putting in front, and this came out yesterday in the Financial Express. So I was saying it's it's a beautiful moment that we are looking at, and I think that shows the commitment of how you is planning to move forward with their structures. I also looked at the education sector, the infrastructure, the manufacturing segments. I think that, that's a great move. But my question here is that if you look at the last one year's uh, uh, scenario, the, the Indian market has actually pulled out. The foreign investors have actually pulled out of the, the money from Indian market to the extent of about 80,000 crores. And in the March 2020 itself alone, they had put out about 1 lakh crore from the FDI investors. So what is the reason? From here, when we look at it, there's a lot of concern being expressed. And if this is the case, how? what is the UP assessment as a, as a state in terms of each industry? And how does this withdrawal put you correct? And how do you attract new investors? That's number one. And the second thing is that I was having this discussion with Neeraj from a manufacturing setup. We've been having these discussions with uh, 3M and others. Now, obviously, you are very much aware of the COVID situation, and this is a disease. This is not something that has had a final destination as yet because it looks like it's going to be having on a journey for quite some time. So, when you prepare in terms of N95 or a N99 mass production, how would you be look at it if we were to bring in a product manufacturing in the MSME sector uh, to put up there? Because when we talk to companies like 3M, the leadership tells us that they are already backed up with 10 is one. They have a demand of about 10 and they are able to supply only one. Now, this is not only for India consumption, but as an export market could be positioned. And India could be one of the main regions who can export. One, they have the population who could actually come and help and move faster. You have the dynamics. You have a leadership that is currently in place who is able to fast, make faster decisions. And uh, obviously, if there's investors and the interest group, how we could work together to make it happen. I think I'll stop at that at this time. Thank you, Sean. I think you bring... Uh hands-on, very uh, practical things. And I'm sure uh, you were talking about getting things made in UP. If you, you get the support, I'm sure Minister Siddharth Nath Singh office can help you get to some points where it can be done. Uh, I move on to Sandeep Pachpande, Chairman of ASM Group of Companies and uh, a pioneer in education sector. And I'm sure you have your thoughts about growth of UP and what can be done or some expectation that you may have from the government. Over to you, Sandeep Ji, please. Yeah. Thank you very much, Neeraj. And a good afternoon uh, to the Honorable Minister, Siddharth Nath Singh Ji, uh, Sean, and my and Parasiman. Uh, the pandemic has disrupted the businesses and lives of the entire world. Worldwide, 350 crore students are facing lockdown in their institutions. And the role of education is to not only prepare the students for the jobs of the future, but also for the future of jobs. But we are still doing it using traditional methods and tools. Creativity, innovation, problem solving are the skills which will be required in the future, which unfortunately our education system is currently 
not encouraging and killing it. But I'm an optimist. I believe that every crisis provides an opportunity. So I believe this is the best time for us to reboot, rethink, redesign, and reimagine the entire education sector. And we have to look at it holistically right from the KG up to the PhD level. A new paradigm shift is required, not only in our teaching pedagogy, but also assessment and regulations, which will require all the stakeholders to work together while embracing technology and also adhering to the Indian values. So, sir, when, when we talk about make in India, time has come that we should reboot our education system to teach in India and learn in India. And I believe that education is the key and the only tool which can help to reskill, upskill, and reskill all the people in the nation to face the challenges, not only what this pandemic has offered, but whatever is offered in the future. The future of the human race depends largely on the high quality education and health. As we say that education is the spirit of the mind, whereas health provides the accelerator to the body. So digitally empowered AI and ML enabled virtual blended practical education is what is the need of the other. UP is the most populated state in the country, as well as having one fourth of its population in the age of five to 14 years. It has the highest number of institutions, schools, colleges, and students learning in India. So I think UP can lead the way for this education revolution in the country. So sir, a few things what I would like to ask you is, unfortunately, education is one of the highest regulated sector left in the country today. When I'm very happy to see what you're doing uh, for the other sectors, um, what can be done for uh, reducing the regulation and giving more autonomy to the education sector. Secondly, since we are still in the lockdown, uh, what would be the way forward to ensure the safety of the teachers and students and the social distancing, especially since we are dealing with students, how even though if the SOPs are given, how can they be implemented? Uh, the third thing and the most important part is how to train our teachers to adapt to this new way of teaching. Taking a lecture online and teaching online are very different things altogether. So how can we prepare our teachers? And I believe UP has the highest number of teachers in the country. And the last thing, sir, is are what steps can be taken to promote edtech and agrotech startups? So basically how we can reinvent the state using education as a tool and even bring in, you know, teach in India and learning India. I think UP can lead the way being one of the largest there and has a great potential to move in there. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, may I request Minister Siddharth Nath Singh to pick up the questions that you may have noted and answer in any manner that you want to. Uh, and then we will take up some questions from the audience. I have some questions that I will then read out to you. But right now, whatever you want to pick up and answer at this point, Minister Siddharth, I'll, please go ahead. I'll Thank try you. quickly. I'll try quick, quick, quickly to answer uh, most of the questions. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Srinivas, uh, you were right that uh, uh, we have a low GDP, and that's uh, a legacy that we are. Uh, we, when we got into the government, we uh, we uh, did, we don't want to live with it, and therefore, I think. Uh, well, Mr. Uh, Sean did answer. Therefore, we came up with an advertisement. And we are in the selection process of a consultant who can uh, help us uh, to develop a one trillion dollar economy. And therefore, a couple of uh, presentations have been done. There's a committee under the chief chief minister himself. I'm part of that committee member as a minister. There are others also. And we are looking in of certain suggestions and the way forward of how we can uh, improve on uh, the delivery mechanisms along when we when I talk about delivery mechanism mechanism, there are certain laws which are quite outdated in Uttar Pradesh. If they are uh, weeded away, certainly the ease of doing business uh, will go up. And I'm happy to say that ease of doing business in last three years, UP has jumped numbers, which has certainly added to the government of India's ease of doing business. And uh, therefore, 
that's one. Uh, in short, I would say that yes, we are uh, we are conscious, and not only conscious, we are taking steps to improve our low GDP, and that can happen just not by agriculture. We are traditionally an agricultural uh, state, but we are adding on with incentives and other things on uh, ag agro and food processing. Uh, similarly, we are also, as I mentioned, on the MSME and also on the manufacturing hub. Therefore, these are the various areas where we are inviting. You mentioned about the infrastructure. Let me uh, bring to your knowledge. I know that Afghans were the, on the Taj Expressway. You've done a great job. But uh, at the same time, we are also bringing the Jaiwar Airport, which will be the largest airport in India. It's got a six runways. It will be already it's been awarded. It's not something and we feel proud to speak about it. In one and a half years, we were in, we were able to bring the tender. We were able to close the tender. We were able to award the tender to Zurich Airport. So that's uh, never heard of. In one and a half years, the land, which was always an issue, we already have got 98% of the land, which is already part with, with us and all uh, been handed over to the Zurich airport. Similarly, the Bundelkhan Expressway is there, the Purvanchal Expressways are there. Then we have 11 airports, which are, they're, they're low frill airports, seven are ready, four are still underway. And uh, we have, since you men mentioned about logistics a lot, logistics is something which UP did bring up uh, with a policy in 2018, but unfortunately, we were not uh, as competitive to our neighboring states. Now we have brought in a change last two in last two weeks. We have brought a change to a logistic policy, which is no more commercial. It will be considered industry. And also the minimum acres, which is required, was brought down from 50 to 25. So it becomes competitive. And as an investment minister, I've already received two, three pr good proposals. So hopefully we will be working towards it. UP is already working, uh, I think, hard and with some success that Bundelkhan may be seeing uh, 15 to 20 gigawatts of uh, solar parks coming up. So that will be a big, big boom for UP. And uh, we, are, we are in discussion with the government of India. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 has slowed down that process to have a green evacuation corridor uh, as a new infrastructure built up for uh, any solar park to come. Otherwise, it just if it comes to our grid, then it becomes, uh, it won't be that uh, cheap electricity won't be available. We already have the open access, which we are giving. So I won't get uh, into many areas. We are coming up with our own industrial park policy. Then we have pharmaceutical parks, which is we are building two pharmaceutical Past. One is in the Lalitpur, other is in near to in Pilibit. So a lot of areas we are working simultaneously. And uh, since Mr. Sean, you didn't mention, but I think you, the first question of yours relates more to the government of India than to the state of Uttar Pradesh. So it should be directed more towards my good colleague, that is Mr. Piyush Goel. So I won't... Uh, I think I wouldn't. I will restrain. Although I can answer, but it won't be appropriate for a state minister to answer that question. But uh, let me also add here, since you mentioned on uh, what UP can do, and you took an example, and I'm taking example of uh, how we, uh, within a month and a half of COVID-19, UP, uh, uh, the leadership. Along with the leadership, I would say the credit goes to the entrepreneurs in Uttar Pradesh. Uh, one, if I say we had no testing labs, it surprises many, a large state with 230 million people, we never had a testing lab for COVID. So we developed 26 of them today. As we talk, we have 26 of them. Uh, we had uh, literally no sanitizer factories existing. Today we are happy to say 99. And in fact, the sugar uh, mills, they came forward. We have about 119 sugar mills. The CM encouraged them. We gave them licenses immediately. So all the sugar mills, literally 75% of them, they started making sanitizers 
in the sugar mills. So that's innovative. Similarly, we don't have PPE kits. Now we manufacture, we have 53 units. From zero, we have 53 units. And we do manufacture uh, 50,000 on a daily basis. That is to 3 lakh, which is the country's uh, production. 50,000 comes from Uttar Pradesh. Similarly, in mass, uh, we are making N95, but uh, uh, N95 is more a medicated mass for medical practitioners. So we have a big population. Um, I also I wear another hat, which is the Khadi. As a minister for Khadi, uh, we decided the Khadi mask to be made. And we we have made uh, 50 crores Khadi mask. So similarly, so we have been innovative. We have gone out of box. So any industries uh, which wishes to come to Uttar Pradesh, so we are ready to transform. And when I say you want to transform, you just don't transform by speaking from governance, policy matters, and ensuring that you are bringing it to the ground. So grounding is must. And I think the, 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 the entire government is very conscious of that fact. And therefore, we are working hard towards it. So we'll be more than happy if any of the proposals that you wish to bring. And that's one of the ideas of this, uh, you know, uh, discussion here. Similarly, Mr. Sandeep, you did mention, uh, quite a, uh, you know, encouraging things of uh, how to go about on the education se sector. Let me explain, you know, when we came in government, uh, we have, uh, I think, 28 or 30 universities. Now, each university had a, its own act. So if you wanted to bring a university, you had to apply. And based on our discussion, we were creating an act. So it was always a confusing thing to do. We, last year, we introduced and we brought an umbrella act. Now, all they are, the Umbrella Act of the basically, in, it gives the guidelines towards most of the things. It's not a kind of a binding or a kind of a holding or restricting the universities and their colleges to expand themselves. And the basic idea for this has been that it encourages institutions to come into Uttar Pradesh, which have a high quality they are in a position to even engage on a twinning programs with uh, various uh, the world class universities so that we can bring in. Uh, and let me just add, you know, the government uh, is uh, act, uh, working. For example, the COVID-19 has thrown a number of challenges. The Even the education won't remain the same. The, the <laughs> curriculums needs to change. It has, it cannot be said that, okay, we will be requiring, or we were doing the BCom co commerce course or the economic or the kind of engineering. It's all going to be changed. So we have to change with that. And the, therefore, uh, just to give you an, an example, uh, I would say, for example, skilling is a very important thing. So MSME industries, the skill development ministry, we have recently got together uh, with the help of a professional. We are developing a, a skill mapping of the entire Uttar Pradesh. We are looking at the sectors which we are promoting for investments. So if I say we have eight, nine sectors which we are promoting in those areas where we stand on skilling. Now, based on that, what would what we need to do? How do we uh, engineer our new courses or the curriculums? So we are we're we going to be that's the mandate. We'll be very shortly coming with it, and in that fashion we'll move forward so that we have deep skills available in Uttar Pradesh. We can't be left. You can't compete with China and say that oh we can compete with China just having our infrastructure to be good. Sorry, we do need with the infrastructure, we do need deep skills. China was just not low cost. That advantage is over. The China always had the advantage because they had deep skills. And that's where the challenge lies, particularly not only in India, for Uttar Pradesh, at least I can speak about. 
and uh, therefore we are looking at we are looking at how do we open uh, something where i'm sure you can help and neeraj can help we have some good universities but our universities those who are doing a phd they ne- they require uh, you know uh, good libraries or the you know to study they can't uh, get those books they don't get those references so how do they get on that platform in that case the best is if we can get into some kind of agreement for digital library they can be given access so if you can help us to tie up with one of our universities and maybe it's a law course it could be any other course i'm just it's an example i'm saying so thank these you. are the things that we are working on thank you minister sadat much we've got uh, four minutes to go so before i have two lines and two thoughts to say then i'll go to each one of you to have one take away point uh, there are two questions i have for you and some thoughts there is to sadat that thing one is uh the concept of factory on wheels which is mapping to the migrant labor there are opportunities that we actually take these little little machines back from where they were into uh, rural tier 3 tier 4 cities like textile machines and small small little things where the migrant labor doesn't have to come to the city to produce that in doing so companies become more competitive because they have to pay lesser than what they would have paid in delhi or mumbai and the second is Uh, you know the you, i'm very happy you talked about skill development there was a need and you took the words out of my mouth there was a need that there were has to be an app a device where data to capture district wise migrant laborers quantity and their skill sets and where they are if that could be made available to the industry then people can strategize about locations and what and where this can be made from making a lakshmi ganesh a uh, tool and toy to textile everything can be done here and one last point which is always the point for any entrepreneur is the support uh, through banking institutions the availability of capital because ultimately you know indian entrepreneurs are very jugaad very innovative they need support of some sort of a capital these are my thoughts and i'll just take uh, mr srinivasan one minute please it's a teen second because we have one minute to go all of you to see it's uh, it's really very glad to note that a lot of initiatives have been taken in the current regime i'm pretty sure with the focus on uh, infrastructure development with associated development like skill and other logistics hub and other things i'm pretty sure up would emerge as a manufacturing hub sooner than later thank you thank you mr srinivas and sean your last comment and thought thank you very much uh, honorable minister for this particular audience that you have given us and i would like to mention thing i think you have a wonderful program ahead that is going on and i would love to talk about some of the msme areas especially with the not only the healthcare sector but you mentioned about the innovative agriculture and technology we have some special products that we should be in a position to bring it to up so i look forward to working with you on this and with neeraj and thank you thank you thank you sean uh, sandeep ji yeah i think so uh, with the skill mapping and competency mapping it can give a great input to education institutions to innovate and renovate and i think you know as we talked about earlier work from home so we we talk of study from school and from that mindset we have to move to study from home to study from anywhere and now study in any way possible thank you thank you sandeep ji well minister sadat not saying i cannot thank you more for being here with us and i think it's Thank very you. encouraging to see that up with 23 crore has the opportunity to go forward and your thought process is positive your one last two lines sir and then we'll, we'll well thank ask. you for giving me this opportunity to explain what up is and we look forward of more engagement and we look forward for more investment coming into uttar pradesh so you got the right man on your screen so please come and we are ready to do business Thank you so much. Let's Thank give a clap for all of you. Thank you very much. We just did it on time. One fifteen. Namaskar. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.